Welcome back to the Review Den. We're going to continue our focus on PSN games with Dungeon Hunter Alliance, a fun, if slightly flawed, top-down hack-and-slash in the vein of Diablo 3 or Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Now, sharp gamers and viewers will notice that, yes, this isn't technically in danger of extinction when the PSN Legacy stores are closed, as this did receive a physical release for the PlayStation Vita, but the problem, the reason I'm putting this into a review, comes from the fact that the very best version, the PS3 console release, is download only. Sort of like my last review for Echochrome. The changes made to the console version may be small individually, but together they make for an experience that is a leap above the handheld release. Now, as a small history lesson, this is originally not even a PlayStation property to begin with. Dungeon Hunter Alliance is a remake of Dungeon Hunter, the first in an intellectual property of Gameloft games focused on hack and slash mobile action. Yes, that Gameloft, the mobile gargantuan that has handled everything from translating existing properties, such as Assassin's Creed, to older Java-powered phone games, to their own multiplayer Call of Duty knockoffs. They've even taken over the Brothers in Arms series and turned it into, well, a multiplayer shooter for phones, which totally blindsided me as I thought the series had gone silent. In fairness, though, mobile gaming does not necessarily mean bad gaming, and seeing the progression in series such as Asphalt shows that they have put in the effort to bring us legitimate gaming, if not monetization. And Dungeon Hunter Alliance is a good example of that. The original Dungeon Hunter, the first in the series, was released to iOS exclusively in 2009, and it had a clean if basic presentation. Sort of reminds me personally of the first generation of 3D accelerated games, such as during the Voodoo 1 and Voodoo 2 era. But just two years later, the game was remade for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita, more on that later, with modern presentation and controls. This is a fantasy hack-and-slash taking place in the realm of Gothicus, where all is not well. Our character, the king of the realm, made use of evil sorcery to bring back his beloved wife from death, and it sort of backfired. Boy, who would have thought that using dark demonic magic to bring back a corpse would have adverse effects. I'm sorry, honey, I didn't mean to make you undead. But evil she is, and is hell-bent on bringing the dark fairy into this world, causing untold harm and devastation. So, it's up to our own newly resurrected king to make things right, and with the most unironic use of the term Slay Queen, we are off on our quest. Dungeon Hunter Alliance takes place over 10 chapters of hack and slash action. You will make your way through this fairly standard world of villages, dungeons, castles, creepy cathedrals, and even the obligatory sewer level. Hey! You'll face off against human enemies such as bandits or corrupt knights, as well as the usual stable of goblins, trolls, drakes, spiders, skeletons, and zombies on your way to take down the Dark Queen herself. Wait, I thought she was blonde. I do like the nice touch of enemies that rope in from above. That's always nice and reminds me of old pirate movies. In fact, I even want to shout out that this game has tons of enemies, which is something that many Baldur's Gate clones started to avoid for some reason. Dungeon Hunter Alliance gives you a target-rich environment every few steps, which is really refreshing. Along the way, you will collect tons of loot to equip or sell to buy new loot, and the experience levels you up for new abilities and better stats. Nothing mind-boggling here, but there doesn't need to be. It's a fun formula. You choose from one of three character types, a warrior, rogue, or mage, although you can equip and use any equipment you meet the requirements for, which is pretty cool. Your abilities tree is locked to the character type, and each type makes better use of certain traits, but this game is more open-ended to weapons and armor. Your traits, or stats, are simplified down to just four in Dungeon Hunter Alliance. Strength, Dexterity, Endurance, and Energy. And each weapon and armor set has requirements to use them. So if you start with a mage but decide to respec partway through the game to focus on strength in order to use heavy armor, you can do so. For my first run, I started as a mage and then focused on dexterity as I had better luck with bows than staffs and finished the game as sort of a magic archer hybrid who could repel standard enemies at range and take down heavy hitters with spells. 
It's not overly deep, but it's more open-ended than most games of the genre. You're also able to unlock more fairy companions who not only help to drive the story, but give access to their own unique spells to keep enemies at bay. As I mentioned, this game launched on PlayStation two years after its first incarnation on iOS, and they must have put those two years and beefier hardware to good use, as Dungeon Hunter Alliance is now fully passable as a legitimate console release, if perhaps suited as a PSN download. This isn't a huge game, a good first playthrough will probably take about seven hours, and you still don't have in-game voice work, but this is on par with other download games of the era, such as Raw, Realms of Ancient War, or Dungeons & Dragons Daggerdale. Actually, it stands out nicely because it looks and runs nicer than its competition, at least on PlayStation 3. It maintains a slick 60 frames per second even during couch co-op, and only dips during busy or hectic fights. The models and environments aren't earth-shattering, but they make use of nice bright colors and bump mapping. Sorry, is it normal mapping? I'm old school. Spell effects and melee strikes all look cool enough, if not perhaps up to Diablo 3 standards, but this game also runs better and costs less than D3 as well. They seem to have struck a nice compromise here, especially if you like smooth frame rates, which many of its competitors do not have. Getting a nice bounce between high quality models, enemies on screen, and frame rate is always a juggling act, and for playability's sake, I think this does nicely. The PlayStation 3 version keeps the view nicely zoomed out as well, which makes for great multiplayer and ranged combat. Sound is pretty standard fare hack and slash, there's no dialogue voice work, but its competition lacked this as well. Music is pretty basic during exploration, but it picks up nicely during boss fights or enemy rushes. Gameplay is what makes or breaks a game, and Dungeon Hunter Alliance walks an interesting line. This is a game that looks great in motion. It runs smooth and flows nicely. It's the type of game that's almost hypnotic to sit and watch someone else play, but playing it yourself is where some cracks form in the armor. You can feel that this is a developer that's coming to grips with modern console gaming, but is just a step behind. As I mentioned, games like Diablo 3 or even smaller releases like Daggerdale may not run quite as smoothly, at least on PS3, but in gameplay, every interaction responds correctly. Every hit register, the hit boxes for environments are reasonably tight, and you never feel like you're missing button inputs. Dungeon Hunter Alliance doesn't quite reach this level. If you watch closely, you'll see that melee combat doesn't quite register each hit. This might not be an issue in light combat or against easy enemies, but every enemy in this game has the ability to slice off a chunk of your health bar. Even low-level combatants can kill you off in three or four hits, and the game is more than happy to throw multiple enemies at you in every encounter. Yes, the game gives you places to restock your potions every few corridors, but it seems to acknowledge this by making you need them very often. If the melee was more precise, I wouldn't mind this, but going into close combat does seem to favor the enemy's hits slightly over yours, which is why I mostly gravitated towards ranged combat. With boss fights, this is even worse. There is zero strategy to boss fights. These are just slugfests, nothing more. Bosses will immediately get in your face and start blasting away at your health, so the only option is to spam your most powerful attack and hope your potions hold out. None of this is game killing, mind you. In fact, most normal combat is still really fun. It just could be more precise. The same goes for navigation. Getting through levels is no issue, it's just that some objects in the environment have stupidly large hitboxes or invisible walls, and since there's always hidden objects to find, I wish navigation was tighter. But for all of these complaints, this is a really fun game, especially in couch co-op. The issues I mentioned may keep it from a top A-level experience, but it's still a blast to play. And all those minor issues melt away when you plop down with some soda and your bestie, or even by yourself, and start slashing away and looting through the game. I'll admit, I've had a soft spot for these games ever since Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, and this game is just fun, which is really what matters. For the price point, I'd probably take this over Daggerdale or Raw.
Everything I've discussed so far has been about the PlayStation 3 release. This is available on PS Vita, and the cartridge release means it won't go extinct. But all the little changes made to the full console version really spell the difference between a hit and a miss. On the Vita, the game does not run or play as well. Visuals are muddied down, the frame rate is choppy, and most importantly, the view is zoomed so far in that it actually gets in the way of gameplay. Yes, you can pinch to zoom out a bit, but you're still too close to use ranged attacks really effectively, and the game takes any and every opportunity to revert to the close-up view. This actually leads to a glitch as well, as any time the enemy strays too far from their spawn point, they immediately go scrambling back. And if they go off screen, they reset their health as well. This really kind of breaks any ranged combat, and it's no small issue. Add to that some forced, irritating touch controls, and yeah, I'm gonna pass on that. There is still ad hoc multiplayer, which is a selling point for the remake, but this version just isn't as fun or playable in either solo or co-op. A few extra weapons and armor featured in this version are not worth the price in my humble opinion, which is why I focus on the PS3 version. As I mentioned, this is a type of game that I find very easy to enjoy, especially co-op. Much like the Borderlands games, which I would argue this genre helped birth, hack and slash games have an addictive gameplay flow that combines simple but engaging gameplay, RPG elements, and constant looting and upgrading. Hardcore gamers might pass on a title that isn't from a big popular intellectual property, or that started as a mobile title, but once in a while, the students surpass their teachers, and compared to at least other PSN releases, I think Dungeon Hunter Alliance has done just that. I love handhelds, and the Vita is no different, but the full PS3 release really has the edge here, so you might want to consider looking into this sooner rather than later, if you are so inclined. As before, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please would you be my next subscriber, feel free to leave comments, and as always, be sure to keep going. You are worth it.